And today's artist talk is a short introduction to how I went about creating the music and the narration and the images for this concert, which is based on the Egypt exhibition. The concert's called Music from Inside the Pyramids. And one of the things about it is that there's an exhibition on with all the Egyptian artefacts and pictures and um, what's been so interesting in seeing that exhibition is that realising that we only have relics, we only have certain representations of that culture of ancient Egypt and the time of the pyramids and the Sphinx. So I'm taking the approach that we only really have a patchwork understanding of that culture in terms of what we physically have. Okay, so there's sarcophaguses and there's embalmed mummies and all the sort of popular imagery. There's the, the pyramids themselves and there's the various stone structures which relate to the cultural and religious life of the time with the Egyptian culture, the ancient Egyptian culture. <coughs> Excuse me. And so I've had to choose a pathway with the concert which is meaningful and relatable and one of the things that struck me was that there's this huge emphasis on prayers and preparation for death and the afterlife but it really got me wondering well <clears throat> that's one part of it but surely their lives must have been very important to them too so to me, looking at the iconography and what I've seen from other religions and spiritual traditions over millennia is that there was a very strong spiritual foundation to everything that they were building and representing with these pictures and monuments. And that, sure, there can be some, as there is in every religion, some kind of reference to uh, a good quality of afterlife I think what stands out for me is, and it, because it's got so much in common with the other civilizations and cultures and, and religions, is a lot of it was about <clears throat> preparation in this life, for this life, in the sense of spiritual enlightenment. And this is something that I'm taking as the central theme for this concert. So the aspect of spiritual enlightenment is something a little bit new for us in the West in many ways. There are exceptions, of course, in the last century or so. But for most of the West, religion has been based on <clears throat> mankind and some kind of deity. <clears throat> and the relationship with that deity has been somewhat um, like uh, humanity being something like perpetual school children and the deity being something like perpetual teacher. And the way that it worked was that the, the deity was worshipped. That's That was the spiritual practice. The deity was worshipped. And in some way it was hoped that the deity would share some of its um, blessings, if you like, with humanity through that, the prayers, etc., and religious practices. However, when we um, study Eastern philosophy and religion, we start to find whole traditions of spiritual practices where the students who came to learn and evolve their spirituality, evolve their life journey, were actually expected to practice, just like if you went to a music conservatorium to study a musical instrument. The idea was that you would practice and get better and better and more and more proficient until you reached the level of your teachers. And this is a fascinating difference between what our modern religions often look like and what the ancient uh, traditions on the planet have actually practiced. So this departure from this um, always having this gap between the, the student and the teacher or the mass of humanity and the deity, this has changed completely in a lot of the Eastern traditions where we have everybody setting about practicing and increasing their spiritual capability, their spiritual awareness spiritual reality that they're able to enter into and, and they're 
I live from. And so we find what we've got is that there's this, um, if you like, steps of progress that are taught and practiced and seen to come to fruition so that there may be a spiritual master or saint, if you like, and they have students or disciples, but what happens is is that those students and disciples eventually attain to that sainthood, to that master teacher level. And so that's the that's the tenet that's underlying this whole concept for me. And that's what I'm wanting to share with audiences. So that's the context and background of the actual concept of the concept. Now, how to go about conveying that? How do we convey that um, as a some kind of participatory journey for the audience. So as the composer and musician, my job was to take people on that journey through the music by and large. So the, um, the sort of things that I'll be doing, it's not, a, it's not a concert where there'll be little melodies that you can hum along with that you might have heard before. It's going to be more of an immersive journey, quite a, a, a meditative experience, if you like. And so... In the concert, I'll be using music as the, the kind of raft or the boat to travel on that river to cross to what we might call higher states of consciousness, um, more advanced awareness, higher dimensional states. And these have all been described in uh, spiritual and religious texts for thousands and thousands of years. So what I'm, what I'm doing with the music I'm selecting sounds, obviously, that relate as much as we're able to ascertain to the ancient Egyptian music that would have been used. Now, we only have pictorial diagrams. We don't have any kind of notation or um, recordings, obviously, from that time. And so what we see is there's flutes, certain flutes and instruments. There's plucked instruments with strings. And there's also, um, that, in that includes harps. And they're probably the most... Um, visually representative artifacts that we've got, those pictures of the musical instruments. And we know how many strings the harps have, very few compared to a modern harp, um, only half a dozen strings commonly. And so that means the number of notes are very limited. So whereas we're used to a very sophisticated musical palette um, with Western music, <coughs> these early musics were maybe three or four or five notes usually. So we know also from that time, and to some extent from the remnants which still exist in these lands in the Middle East, that the scales have a certain distinct quality. So I'll be using I'll be using scales that relate <coughs> more directly with what, as far as we know, is close to the original um, music that would have been heard at that time. Um, I'm using a violin, obviously that's my instrument. And there were no bowed instruments at all in, in ancient Egypt, as far as we can tell from the records. So, but that's my job as a modern musician, a contemporary musician, to create and convey a story in a context with the means that I have, which is the violin. So, uh, to give you some examples, um, a typical scale. like that, very limited palette. And it can either be bowed or, um, for contrast, it can use um, pluck notes. So using these sort of, sort of very limited pellets. But I think that helps too in a way to create something of a relationship with that time because we can feel that in our bones really, in our soul, in our heart. We can feel that, we would call it exotic, but it is a Middle Eastern flavour and I think it resonates with that time as much. It's a sort of musical artefact from that time of ancient Egypt. So I'll give you an example I'll take you on a, a mini journey of what we're going to be doing at the concert. So we're trying to convey this whole 
picture of ancient Egypt, but really from the perspective of spiritual enlightenment, where it was a, it was a civilization that was orientated to having a deeper experience of life, a much more expanded uh, inward connection with life. Mm.